uh, I'm really available for any questions now and also later on through email. Please. Oh, thank, yeah, thanks a lot, uh, Professor, for this very interesting uh, topic uh, and lecture. Uh, I don't know if uh, someone has any question. Not at this time, but uh, I will review the lecture yes. and may come up with some other yeah. questions. But the last example that you gave with this monitoring system in the mountains, I think that's the perfect example for... Yep. Uh, how you can use artificial intelligence to support human intelligence. <laughs> Decision making. Yeah, actually, I also I have some uh, some few things about this uh, last last slides, uh, but again I need to review it a bit and then I can uh, communicate with you by email just uh, uh, asking. But I say I can see Nils has a question. It's a very fast one. Um, I was wondering if this is working under sea level as well. Like, have you tried it ever with whales, for example? Mm -hmm. no, 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 not at this time. Uh, I'm an expert on terrestrial biodiversity monitoring. Uh, sea is completely different community. There are many, many people working now for 50 or 60 years on marine biodiversity monitoring, but I'm not part of that community. But there is there is models for that. There is a sort of uh, uh, tools in order to apply the same same idea, but in in sea or in ocean. Oh, actually, they started this technology before uh, us. Uh, I mean, us yeah. were in this case the terrestrial guys. Mm. Uh, in the sea, they are working now more than 60, 70 years, uh, starting uh, from Carl Sagan movies cosmos mm. Mm. Uh, and there are many uh, monitoring networks that monitor for dolphins for uh, whales for uh, uh, marine uh, uh, resources that have economic dimension mm. and uh, there are various networks that are fully operational in mediterranean for instance they are and they work for, for many, many years, maybe for 30, 40 years. And uh, they are very well funded, first because of the military. Mm. They can discover submarines and also other things, but they are uh, monitoring biodiversity in the ocean. Mm. Yeah. Do you know if they're working with the same approach? as you do, or is it the sonar system, something different? What is different there is the acoustic channel. Mm. Underwater conditions are much different because uh, water has different properties than air. So they use hydrophones and they use uh, different transducers to capture the sounds. But otherwise the technology, the module yeah. development, the decision-making is common. We yeah. share the same technology. Yeah. What is different is the sensors the and the transducers. Yep. Thanks. You know. So, any other questions from uh, from other audience? I have a question. Yeah, please. Yes, please. <laughs> so. I really like the I really like the topic, right? And uh, however, we barely discussed any cybersecurity part. And my question will be for the lecturers as well: Is there going to be a module on cyber? Because I think cyber is also a very important step of the innovation because the industry is like hundred fifty billion dollar industry. And it's widely mentioned. So if we're moving towards the big data, if we're moving towards the machine learning, um, cyber tech is kind of like unavoidable component towards that. And at the same time, since kind of like my, my background is in um, international relations, I'm also interested in perspective of the global um, global world and the countries and, and of course how government intervene with um with our lives right so basically 
um, like in case of China, right? Because like, again, like speaking of the junk news, <laughs> uh, I've read that Chinese government kind of like prohibits the celebrities to post, um, to kind of like follow the Kim Kardashian steps and, and create any tensions between people or show them the wealth because uh, the government's agenda, uh, you have to be a good communist or socialist uh, citizen and you don't have to like show off on social media and kind of like create the tension. So again, in order to control the population. So here I am thinking from that perspective. Um, and the second part is my favorite as well. We barely talk about dark web because I am aware that we have, like how I see the world, I see the world like this. So we live on, on top of it. And there is a whole another world that underneath what we see. So such as like dark web, human trafficking, organ trafficking. And I've heard like you can buy anything, the cryptocurrency, this and that, like, like can we have a module on this and dive in into that thing as well? Um, but everything is quite interesting. Thank you. Yeah, these are very nice uh, aspects. Yes, indeed, artificial intelligence has great applications in cybersecurity. Uh, they are systems which can recognize uh, just by phone conversation, by your voice, uh, your height, your body mass, if you are a woman or a man, your age, uh, your educational background, your country of origin, there are such systems already. And also there are many other systems that monitor for the traffic and for the profiling of everybody, depending on the keywords we enter inside of, of the browser. And depending on the information we access, I'm not the expert in cybersecurity really, uh, I would say it is one of the hot application areas where artificial intelligence is used mostly for search by example, query by example, or for filtering information. And moreover, it is very closely related to the advertising business where companies monitor our behaviors and then recommend Advertise, uh, uh, advertise according to, to our behavior and our interests. These are very similar things, just the end user is different. Cybersecurity is uh, uh, for the, uh, let's say, governments and the advertising businesses for the companies. Uh, it is the same technology everywhere, this technology. It builds models based on data, then use the models to make decisions. And then these decisions are implemented as actions depending on the platform you use. And there is the game industry. We didn't touch also the game industry. It is a great uh, playground for artificial intelligence. We all play games, maybe most of us. And it is very interesting to play against uh, uh, opponents which have artificial intelligence because they make the game of equal difficulty to everybody. I mean, in order to keep the interest of the user, of the gamer, it should be difficult, but not too much. Mm -hmm. If it's too much difficult, the user will give up and not buy the next level. But we humans have different mental capacity, different reactions, different kind of thinking. So how is possible one game to be equally difficult for different people? Also, there are people with disabilities. There are also potential buyers of these games because the game often has artificial intelligence or elements of this and is able to recognize the uh, profile of the gamer, if he is a child or a teenager or adult. And based on this profile recognition, 
the games adjust the difficulty so that more people feel in the area of comfort when play this game. And then more people are ready to pay more for the next level. Artificial intelligence is more than talking human or walking robot, really. So, but what is your intake on dark web? Because that's also interesting for me because when I, <laughs> I learned like you can buy anything on the dark web, including like organs or human may, and slavery is still happening. Uh, in this happening. direction, yes. May I suggest to you to read the time machine of Herbert Wells? It is written 100 years ago, but it provides the answers of your questions. Okay, time machine? This, the time machine, yes. These people who do not work and live in the heaven are on the surface. And below the surface, there are other people who specialized in other things. It is only 100 pages. It will be interesting, I believe. Yeah. It is available free online, the time machine. It is written in very nice English, the old one from, from the 100 years ago. It, it will be very uh, fashionable, I'd have to say. Uh, you will be inspired. It goes in the direction you, you consider. Yeah. Yep, so thank you very much. I have uh, one comment and maybe I will... Uh... Small, two comments actually. One one of them is uh, when it's expected to have this uh, course foundation of AI. Uh, uh, when we uh, set up this hub mm -hmm. at the premises of Tuvarna, probably it will be in December. It will be available. Uh, okay. These are seven lectures and seven exercises. The exercises are very nice. Uh, my uh, colleague made a great effort to uh, explain how classifiers work for non-engineers okay, without great. equations. It is nice environment where one can play with, uh, with different parameters and really understand what is behind the classifier, what are different parameters, how they affect the decisions made. And we'll also, uh, everybody will have the chance to see how the assumptions made by different classifiers lead to different decisions. Every classifier makes a different uh, assumption. The one uh, is uh, based on one assumption, the other on other. Uh, these are very, very interesting aspects that we need to consider. Today, I didn't have much time to, to go into details, but uh, one who goes to the labs will see this. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think I think the lecture of today is just as a sort of introduction, like of course. Uh, this is this is the importance of a AI, and uh, uh, as Serena highlighted, that there is a lot of things that we didn't cover today, but it somehow touched the topic. Uh, I don't expect this this point is uh, will be covered in the foundation of AI, uh, the course that you will give, but maybe uh, Alexandra and Angel, we can discuss this later. We can. Uh, try to establish this uh, courses related to the security, cyber security, and these things. If mm -hmm. if there is a possibility to do something like this, we can discuss it, of course. Exactly. Yes. Uh, I think now uh, I don't know if there is any question. If not, maybe we can go to Professor Angel in order to have uh, our homework.